We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine. That's Emily. Uh, it is Tuesday when you're listening to this because Argentinian Wi-Fi is Sucks. unique, Sucks. but... Yeah, it, it, it kind of sucks. Um, but we're here. We have things to say about the Mexico City Grand Prix. And it was quite an interesting race weekend. Just a little to bit. Say at least. Just a few yeah. things happened. You know, Checo went flying. K Mags destroyed his car. We had a red flag. You know. Lando Norris went from P17 to P5. It was um, quite, quite the adventure. His points, hello? Yeah. And uh, Lewis sneakily getting points and, you know, catching up to Checo and, and the total standing. So lots yeah. of things going on. I will say, because I was working volleyball, that the red flag, like, obviously it was terrible for k Mag that, is, that he crashed his car because the rear suspension broke, but that the red flag came at the perfect time um, because I, so I was at volleyball working, and there's a five-minute break between sets two and three, and during that time was lights out. So I got to see lights out. I got to see all the chaos at turn one. Um, I got to see all of that. And then I kept like just glancing off to the side because I had my iPad next to the scoring tablet, which if you're a newbie statistician, I do not recommend. You need to focus. I've been doing this for almost a decade and a half. Um, so I'm, I'm really good at what I do. Um, but then as the game was... I mean, yes. Um, but then as the, the game was over, I was in the car just as K-Mag crashed. And so by the time I got home, about 20 minutes later, they were just getting ready to start the restart. So it was like perfect timing for me um, on Sunday with like everything that was happening during the race. I know. I was like messaging you. I'm like, oh my gosh, K-Mag, looks like he's in pain. Oh my gosh, are we going to get a red flag? Are we going to have a standing start? And I got no response from you. And I'm like, so either volleyball like is going crazy or she's driving home. <laughs> One of the yeah. two. Yeah, yeah, and it, it was the latter. Uh, yeah, but yeah, because no. you you texted me um, and and you were like, I'm so I'm I'm so bored because there was a, a segment in the pre-show and I'm like, I'm at volleyball. I'm not watching the pre-show. Well, I wasn't bored. I said I think I'm falling asleep because George was like detail explaining every single button on the steering wheel in his like not exciting voice like if it was someone else who showed like they were really you know into it it would have been maybe interesting but he was like so this button well this button you know I don't use all that often and I'm like oh my god it was so boring but great well I mean I am curious about those steering wheels but yeah maybe maybe if it's fun yeah make it exciting for us make it interactive I don't know maybe it's just because it was George I'm kind of George's stock is falling for me I just you know not not a fan right now he's also not having the greatest season and it's like very under the radar that the season isn't going very well for him so I, I can understand yeah poor guy but anyways um Cool. So also just a heads up, apologies in advance. I am very sick and I will be coughing through this episode. So if Catherine can't cut it in post post recording edit, I apologize in advance. But you're lucky I'm here. So with that being said, let's get into our hot lap recap, even though we've kind of already talked about it all, but let's still talk about it. So kick us off, Catherine. Yeah, um, Ferrari blew their front row lockout big time and basically handed Max Verstappen the lead within the first two turns. Yeah, it was that was brutal. It, I mean, we all should have known that they were going to do something when they were like, oh my gosh, we're so surprised. We have a, a front row lockout. This is so exciting and not anticipated. And, you know, they just shot the bed. So typical Ferrari. Whoops. Um, Max then went on to run away with it at the restart, and he won his record-breaking 16th race of the season, um, and he got to wear a giant sombrero, which, good for Max. 
yeah, I did, it was just, it was, that was very out of nowhere. Um, but speaking of sombreros, um, on, the, on the first turn of the race, uh, Red Bull teammate Sergio Perez decided to go flying off Charles Leclerc's front wheel and had to retire due to uh, pretty significant damage because Red Bull doesn't actually give you wings. Does not. Nope. And for all of you out there who listen consistently and listen to me, give Checo a hard time. I was being nice to him in our predictions podcast and I shouldn't have been. And this is what you got. And this is what I got. Um, but yeah, so, but then in more positive light, like we said earlier, Lando Norris went from P17 to P5 and he gave the stadium section a, such a good show when he overtook George Russell on lap 68, such a good overtake. Um, and I just love seeing him pass George Russell as well. So. Yeah, I mean, always, always love to see a, a Mercedes get overtaken, but also in the stadium section of that track where you don't so see cool. overtakes. No. So freaking cool. So awesome. Yeah, and another really cool thing that was kind of the biggest storyline of the weekend was Danny Ricardo. He finished P7, um, scored his first points at AlphaTauri, and was able to move the team up to P8 in the constructor standings, which is many, many millions of dollars in prize money if that position holds through to the end of the season. Yeah, I think the biggest storyline in general is just Daniel Ricardo. full stop. Like, yeah. Through- every free practice through qualifying and the race like I didn't think it would hold I was like oh he's doing really well in free practices like he's up there and then he qualified I'm like oh my gosh and then he was racing and he raced really well he's in an Alpha Tari (laughs) yeah the car is not good the car is terrible and he didn't get the best jump on the restart so he did fall back which is kind of you know sad but um, still P7, I'm so happy for him. I'm so excited for him. So, yeah. And if he had another lap, he would have gotten George. Oh my um, God. There, right like, there. Yeah. George's tires like, were gone. George was, was thinking every motorsport deity in the world that that race was ending when it did. Yeah. No, I mean, he even needed just a few more corners. Maybe I don't, I don't even know if he would have needed a full lap, but, um, if they were just, you know, a little bit. The timing and the of the race ending the finish line. I think um, if it was a little different, Danny could have overtaken him easily. Yeah, so. and I will say, um, and we don't really talk about this, but I know that a lot of people do talk about it. Um, the TV direction cut off from Danny going after George um, to show Max crossing the finish line, and there were a lot of people who were like. Yes, we get it, but Max was also 11 seconds ahead of Lewis, so like, why don't you stick to the really exciting part, or at least, um, because Sky Sports will do like that picture in picture, like, why didn't they at least do that, Um, which even though he didn't make the overtake, I think that they should have found some way to continue showing that off, even if it did have a thing cutting cutting out in the corner of the screen as the, the fireworks were going off for Max, like, come on. No, I agree. I mean, Max had already won the race, like, after what, lap one? Um, No, I'm just kidding. But it was already won. Like, that's where the fight was. They should have at least showed it in picture in picture, but whatever. Yeah, exactly. We move on to the next race. Um, Yeah, so that's kind of our hot lap recap for the Mexico Grand Prix. Also, I'm kind of sad that we're leaving Mexico because I am obsessed with the mariachi version of the F1 and the intro. It was so good. Absolutely loved it. It's so fun and festive and I, I love that they do it. Yeah, I, it's, it's definitely one of my favorites. I was a little bit bummed that obviously I was in the middle of a volleyball match. I couldn't just turn the volume up of my iPad and be like, sorry, I need to listen to this for 40 seconds and then we can go back to the game. Um, but I did listen to it when I got home, um, even though I've, I've heard it, you know, last season, but I, I love that they do it. It's just it's so unique um and and when they sprinkle that that you know every every year they'll do one or two races like really unique like that like last year they when um for seb's last race they put him at the end of the the intro they just they shifted him forward ahead of max like i love when they do things like that agreed agreed no i absolutely love when they do small little fun details and i think 
personally, it would be so fun if they did an F1 intro special to each race. I know they won't, um, which is why it, the Marioff G version is so special and cool because it's different. Um, yeah. But I love when they do their small little touches. And I think F1 in general in a, as a sport is really good at that attention to detail. Yeah, like they have the the intros before the the driver let's call it the the driver credit section at the beginning like they have those um pre-cut intros where they have you know like um before kota with adam driver i thought that one was actually really good um and so i i, I do enjoy those too but it's like when they when they die when they break into like making those changes to the the opening score like it's like all over that stuff yeah it's really cool yeah Oh, and then going into the race, pretty much turn one. Yep. Oh, we had a Ferrari sandwich, Ferrari Red Bull sandwich. Yep. Um, that Checo did not come out on the other end in a positive. No, way. he 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 full sent, and I think that he was he was right to he, like he got the the slipstream of his dreams from Max. Um, yeah. It's his home race. He he really like he he said it in in those in the interviews after he got out of the car. Like he would have regretted it if he didn't try. Um, and yeah, Which you know what? I really like. I'm gonna compliment Checo here. Oh, it's frozen over. I admire him, and I think it's cool that he's like, listen, I DNF'd, but if I wouldn't have gone for it, I would have hated myself. I went for it. I'm going to always go for the like the best line, and I thought I had it. I didn't. Oops. And, like, it's his home race. He has to go for it. You have to go all out. That's why they're F1 drivers. That's why they're in this seat. They take those risks. They take those chances. Sometimes they pay off. Sometimes they don't. So if he would have, yeah. like, backed off, like, then it's like, who knows what would have come of that like Checo's backing off he's not driving strong blah blah blah, blah. the mental gymnastics he's probably going through right now too with oh the yeah seat. like I can't even imagine he was going for, he was going for the win that's what you want to see a driver do so I applaud him for that yeah I I do too and and uh, you know I also respect the way um Charles Leclerc handled it like especially that post-race interview all those fans booing him who were just obviously upset that you know he you know that Checo was out of the race but it's not like Leclerc actively tried to turn into him to knock him out of the race he had nowhere to go because Max had the that inside line um and and you really can't do you know three three abreast on on that track um no. and and it just it it happened um and unfortunately it didn't work out for for Checo but I I think he he did the right thing also let's just take a beat and talk about the fans at Mexico like oh I know yeah Charles Leclerc, Charles Leclerc and like I that sucks I feel for him it wasn't his fault he didn't deserve that they were also like fighting in the yeah state. And like beating up on Ferrari fans and Mercedes fans and it's like I get you're passionate and you love Checo but like let's take a beat and not you know punch each other there were people who got like lifetime bans and yeah no longer allowed at any F1 event ever not just in Mexico but in totality of F1 which like which is exactly what they should have done of course, the, like the FIA or F1, whoever makes these, you know, crowd decisions, um, it's not like they send them to the stewards, but uh, <laughs> if they did, that'd be funny. Um, but whoever made that decision, a thousand percent made the right call to throw them out and give them a lifetime ban. Like that is not needed in the sport. It's not warranted. Zero percent does that crash mean you have to go beat someone up. Like drinking heat, whatever came a part, was a part of it as well that's just not okay not okay yeah yeah no uh, not at all speaking of things that, that were were not okay from from that um uh after the 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 crash which also um Perez went flying exactly like Alonso went flying um when he crashed into Stroll at Cota last year um I just so like that was le legitimately the first thing I thought when I saw that crash was 
oh, God damn it, this is not going to go well for, for him. And two, that's what happened to Fernando. Um, but the third part is um, the, they, the, they said on the broadcast that Leclerc's car um, was going to be investigated after the race for driving in an un unsafe condition because um, a part of his front wing end plate was, you know, broken off because, you know, Perez crashed into him. Um, but... It ultimately fell off the car. No one got hurt. Um, and and I know that, like, Haas and Gunther Steiner are, like, kicking themselves because if, if you have a problem with the car, the stewards can it can meatball flag you and, and can make you go into the pit. But they did it. Tags. Yeah, because K-Mac always gets meatball flagged. Um, so I know that, that, you know, Gunther was like, well, why the hell aren't they, you know, meat flag meatball flagging um, Leclerc? Um, and so they ultimately, I, you know, when we were doing the rundown, he had, you know, gone to the stewards and we hadn't heard yet. But, you know, fade in, fade out. The stewards made the correct decision to not punish Leclerc for doing something that they, if it was really a problem that they would have handled during the race. Well, and I think it's different situations. Like, whenever K-Mag's wing was, like, flying, it literally was, like, flying everywhere. And it's and Leclerc's was just kind of dangling, and then it eventually fell off. Um, yeah. So I think it's, you know, situational. I do want to touch on something, though. It looked, after this crash, Checo kind of, like, spun out, and he, like, got back on track and was, like, trying to make his way around. And, and then he's, like in the garage and they're doing work on the car to see if they can send him back out i'm like oh my god he's gonna double dnf again i know just, you said that please god just keep him in the garage like yeah and something on the radio or i think it was I, I don't know if it was crofty or or martin but they were like they really want to just get the car out there to drive around the track just so the fans can see him <sighs> and i'm like yeah but like at what cost like let's not that would have been worse the stat of two d double DNFs, like, in a season, no one wants that stat, so. Yeah, um, no. I'm glad that they just retired the car and didn't send it back out there, because, like, who he it probably wouldn't have lasted very long anyways, and... Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Perez, Perez got out of the car, he did his media duties, and he, he went out to salute the fans from the pit straight, so, like... You know, they 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 ultimately did the right thing in the end, and I I really I don't know if I don't think that they would have been serious about trying to get the car out. As like, obviously they wouldn't have known that there was going to be a red flag that was going to just completely put him back into it, or at least put him back into P twenty. Um, but that's still really not what you 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 want to see, and and not what you want to have happen. No, and like I get it. I've never seen a country love a drive one driver so much. Like the love right? for like. I mean, look at America, right? We ha or the USA, sorry, not America, United States. We have one driver as well, Logan Sargent, but you don't see everyone going fucking bonkers for Logan Sargent. Like, granted, he's a rookie, but still, like, Mexico loves Checo, which is really endearing and really cool to see. Um, and I guess the Dutch love Max, which is fine, but that's a little different. Um, yeah. I but I've never seen, like, one country love their driver so much. Like, it's really cool to see, but... Anyways. Yeah, I mean, he, he, is, he is, like, one of the major, major sports fixtures in that, in that country outside of, like, their soccer stars. Um, and it's... Football. Sorry, the, the football stars. Here, we call it football. I'm still gonna call it soccer um but but yeah it's it's just it it is like they they love him so much and i i think that the only way to com to compare it and this is just something that we haven't had an opportunity to see yet and maybe we will next year is just how much china loves zhou guan yu because like i i think it's that same iconic status and that we just don't see it because every time we try to to F f1 tries to to schedule the chinese grand prix it gets canceled for whatever reason so maybe 2024 will happen this is gonna be like way off track and i you know call track limits on me if you want to i can't wait for zhou guan yu's homecoming to china mm -hmm. to see the fits and see like everything he does see him rocking the press like just having his moment i'm so excited for him i love zhou guan yu i know he's not the strongest driver i know he hasn't had like the greatest season but i really like him as a driver and i think he's so good for the sport so absolutely my yeah. my box on on Joe Guan Yu. Mostly, I'm just here for the fashion. Love oh, it. Yeah. Um, but also, I think he's just really good for the sport in general. 
So I, I think a lot of these young drivers are good for the sport. So anyways. yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, okay, getting we- back back on track. Um, <laughs> and- yeah. So Kevin Magnuson, unfortunately, he he hit a curb wrong and it just totally destroyed his his rear suspension. And then he went flying. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't see most of it um i i was listening to that portion of the broadcast in the car so i heard that he had gotten out and he was just sitting there watching his car catch fire which like i can't imagine that's got to be the most one of the most depressing things um is just sitting there waiting for for the marshals to come to put your car fire out and you're just waiting it took them like i feel like a while long time to show up normally they're like right there but they definitely took their sweet time granted the fire didn't start until a little bit after he had crashed but still normally they're like right there to see if you're okay and it did take them a while and then they finally red flagged it um but yeah when he got out of the car he looked like he was in pain and kind of like shaking limbs like ow um so i was like oh my gosh please be okay but of course like an impact at high speed with G is like, obviously it's going to hurt. Um, but just hoping, you know, that it wasn't an injury like Danny Ricardo that's going to take him out of the car, which I don't think it is. So, um, but glad yeah, I didn't want okay. another broken hand. No, glad he's uh, walking away from it. So, um, but that red flag did trigger a restart, which yeah. kind of like shake, shook, shaked, shook shaked. everything up, shaked, shaked, shaked. Um, which shook everything up, not too much, but it did help some people out. Um, and Max just really ran away with it after the restart. Um, yeah, like he he was he was just gone. Like there was there was a question of, you know, how chaotic would the restart be with the, most of the field starting on hards, um, and it wasn't chaotic at all. And then it kind of just became like, a you know, ba- you know, barring Danny Ricardo being, you know, doing Danny Ricardo things and Lando doing Lando things. It really was kind of a, you know, one of those, you know, boring kind of races. Cause Max got the start that he was looking for um, again, which Max is not a great starter. So the fact that he had two phenomenal starts in one race is kind of a big deal. Um, but he, phenomenal. I would just say he had good starts. I, that first one was pretty damn good, though. And then the, sec- the second one was he did what he was supposed to do. Um, but he's got his, his record breaking, breaking his own record of 16 wins in a season. Uh, he won a sombrero. Um, and, yeah, I mean, there was a question of, like, could Lewis get him? And Lewis could not get him. No, he couldn't. Um, but Lewis did have a really good restart. He passed. Who did he pass? Charles. Charles, yeah. Yeah, he passed Charles, who was really worried about the restart. <laughs> he, well, well way, yeah, and like, Ferrari said... That'd be interesting. So Yeah, and then Ferrari said, like, the, the, the hards will be faster than the mediums in five laps, and that did not happen. It was their prediction, which, you know... Unless Carlos is calling strategy for Ferrari, I don't know if I trust it. yeah. Their predictions are about as accurate as ours. Exactly. Honestly. Um, But yeah, so speaking of Lewis, he did have a really good race. He did finish P2, and he scooped up fastest lap as well, which I think, you know, is a a little feather in his cap against Max. Um, Yeah. And now he trails Perez by 20 points in the driver's standing. So if you look back to last weekend... Um, when we were in Coda, or I guess two weekends ago now, um, Last if weekend. he would get disqualified, then he would only be ba- behind by, like, what, one point? Um, yeah, it would have been one point. Yeah, so, he, but he's only behind by 20 now against Checo in the driver's standings for that second place, which is wild. Like, where did he come from? Where did Lewis Hamilton come from? All of those sneaky points have added up. Yeah, it's it's those fifths and sixths and fourths and those those odd podiums that he gets, um, and and they, um, I think Mercedes said at the end of the race like you you did a great job. Now we need to get you a race winning car, um, and I think that Mercedes is going to be very strong next season. I think so too. Yeah, uh, which pains I me would, to say, but I want to see Lewis and Max like duke it out again, like twenty twenty one. 
Like, that's what I want to see. I want to see it flip-flopping back and forth, really strong competitive races. Um, I think this season has gotten a lot better. At the beginning, it was like, this sucks after, what, lap three? Um, yeah. And that's a lot more competitive across the board. So I think it's every every single constructor and team is really understanding what they need to do to the car, except for Aston Martin, who keeps making downgrades. Yep. Um, but I think next year is going to be a really really good year for f1 yeah you heard it here first 2024 season is gonna be fun to watch yeah i mean we're already gonna have the silly season of our lives next year with all these contracts that are gonna be up so wait i want to like pre-game silly season like i don't know what that means but you know what i mean it's just like Mm -hmm. a month-long affair of like I won't be able to sit in my seat with all the anxiety and build up an anticipation. I'm just going to have to, like, drink away my sorrows. I'm just kidding. I won't. But um, it's going to be so crazy and wild, and I'm so excited. I can't yeah. wait. Um, maybe next season, Charles can get um, a win from A pole. win off pole? <laughs> I'm going to say no, but maybe. No. Max has... I think the stat that Max has won... From 10 of Leclerc's polls, like, beyond the fact that we had no idea how Leclerc got pole in the first place and how Ferrari got that front row lockout, um, because they were not that fast all weekend, and I know that, like, sometimes you have different run plans and blah, 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 and re- and Ferrari is great on a, on a single lap, but no one saw that coming, but everyone saw Max converting off of a Leclerc pole. Well, everyone can see Max converting off of, like, starting in any pole position so it's not like that wild but you know it's still funny it's still funny poor guy I feel for him I really do he tries so hard and he just like can't quite get there but maybe Maybe. yeah I I mean he he really got screwed over in Kota so the fact that he managed to cling to that podium whether Checo fans were happy about it or not he managed to keep the podium and not get digged off the podium so overall I think he can he can see that as a positive outcome from the race well he has a few more races this year to maybe get pole and maybe convert but I'm gonna say he uh, has better luck next year just a personal Mm -hmm. I don't know we'll see yeah um, but honestly, the highlight of my entire weekend was Daniel Ricardo. I don't know how many oh, yeah. times I told you, Danny, Danny, OMG, Danny, my anxiety is so high. Danny, Danny, my anxiety for Danny. Ah. Um, I think, I think that's pretty much all of my messages to you for the entire weekend. Pretty much. It was just about Daniel Ricardo. Um, yeah. I'm so happy for him. I know like P7 is not the greatest you know, obviously he didn't win, but coming back off of a, an injury, being out of the car for so long, not really competitively racing all year until, you know, what, last weekend in Coda, um, this is amazing for him. It's yeah, awesome. it's, it, and not, not only for him, but he, this was his best finish since last year in Mexico, where he also finished P7 in the McLaren. Um, But in this case, those points that he got from Mexico City puts AlphaTauri in P8 in the standing. So they they jumped over Haas and Alfa Romeo. Technically, they're tied with Alfa Romeo on points with 16, but due to results, um, the aggregate, they finished higher, um, which is why they're in eighth and Alfa Romeo's in ninth. But if this holds, that's $20 million in prize money that Danny's points is helping AlphaTauri, you know, get. And if they, you know, move even more and or even just maintain that position that's still a lot more money than what they had had previously or would would have will have and i feel like alpha tari kind of like gave up their season and they Mm -hmm. were like well this isn't happening let's throw danny and see what happens well 20 million dollars that's what happens so good on him i think it's i could not believe that he out qualified checo right Like, the car is, you know, the car is the car. Everyone talks about how much is it the car, how much is it the driver. Um, But when you have an AlphaTauri versus a Red Bull, I think it's very dramatically different. And so for him to be able to get that car into qualifying, what, P4, um, I think that's pretty incredible. 
Yeah. It doesn't and race pace yeah. the entirety of the race, but just to show that he can do, you know, qualifying like that in that car is amazing. I'm so happy for him. Yeah, he also admitted in the post race show, um, he 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 and Lando were interviewing each other instead of being interviewed by the by the post race guys. Um, which I will also add that this was Will Buxton's three hundredth Grand Prix, um, which is so many, so good for him. He's one of the the presenters from the from um, Formula One. He he's the guy on Drive to Survive who makes those dramatic pauses. Um but um, while they were interviewing each other, Lando was asking Daniel about the car and his hand. And Daniel admitted that he still can't make a complete fist with his broken hand yet. So his pinky goes out whenever he makes right turns in the car. <laughs> That's so funny. I yeah. I get like a photo of that. Just like, meow, meow. Yeah. Which I don't know how Lando knows that. Like, Obviously, he's seen clip. He's seen bits of Daniel driving or something because you can't really like see into a guy's car unless he did see it when they were when they were battling. Um, when because Lan- Lan- one of Lan- one of mm, words, Catherine, one of Lando's overtakes was of Danny, so that was um, one of those fun like ooh former teammates dramatic moments of that race. Yeah, it's interesting to think about like how they all know. Oh, speaking of which completely off track i love the cool down room which they don't cool down they're literally in there for five seconds but i really love how everyone um the drivers get to see the race and they're like oh wait when did this happen wait what happened oh he's out oh he did like they have no concept of what actually goes on because they're driving so fast and only focusing on themselves but it's also so interesting to see like how clued in and and just how well they know cars because when k max hit the curb max goes oh his suspension broke yeah and it's like, yeah it's like, how do you know this like i can't see it and it's just like they're so in tune with what's going on it's it was interesting but i love the cool down because you always get to see like their perspective and them talking about things that happen and i don't know i like it going off track yeah. but yeah uh, it was, it, it's it's a lot of fun i love that they brought that back yeah no definitely um, another, like, funny thing that kind of happened on track, um, that I just think is hilarious, um, Esteban Akon, my man, yes. comes on the radio and goes, um, can someone inform Haas that I'm gonna take it, o- that I'm coming and I'm gonna overtake or something like that? Like, I'm coming after him. Coming after them. And it's like, and I don't know what presenter, I think it was Crofty. He was like, well, that's going to be an interesting one for the FIA to review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, because you have, like, you can only say so much on the radio or whatever, but I don't know. Maybe Akon was really feeling himself, and he's like, oh, yeah, Nico, like, you're mine. I'm overtaking you. And then I don't think he actually ever did. I mean, he no, he he did overtake him. It just took a while. Like, you thought yeah. with that threat that it was going to be, like, that next turn or that next lap, and it was, like, a couple laps later before he did. Yeah. Um, I, and I don't know if you saw this, but Nico shared one of Esteban's stories, and it was like, it took you long enough or something like that. <laughs> it was really funny, like, the banter afterwards. Um, but this was also Hulkenberg's 200th F1 race, which, unfortunately, he finished P13, but they did some fun stuff for him they they filled his his room in the garage with um like the hulk hands um and they did a team photo with everybody wearing the hulk hands so that was really cool yeah no it definitely um i saw all the hulk hands and i'm like what are those i'm like oh hulk smash hands yes i get it Uh uh-huh yeah um yeah it took me a while to get that one but i was also very you're under the weather i was not in my right state of mind um, okay, so there is one thing I want to kind of also bring up. Logan Sargent. Yep. Qualified P20. Was given a 10 place grid penalty. And then started P19. <laughs> well, he, he was qualified P20. Um, he was promoted to P19 because Sonoda was going to start from the back because he had a power, he, he had to change a a component in his car that was outside his, his, um, allocations. So he 
that was then promoted to P19, given a 10 place penalty, and then given back to, to P19, which I just think is hilarious because two years ago, around this time of year, Botas got like a 30 place grid penalty because he had to change some components in his car, but still ended up like starting the race P14, P15. And I just think it's so funny that like they'll give somebody who's starting from the back a 10 place grid penalty, which doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's out of principle, Catherine. I mean, I know it is, and they also gave him, they put two points on his super license, which is, like, the kind of the bigger deal, except the only driver who has ever gotten close to a disqualification for points on a license is Pierre Gasly, who they kind of just forgot about, you know, the points on the license thing, and, like, he's had enough expired that we don't talk about it anymore, but, like, that was a huge talking point going into the end of last season and the, the beginning of this season, because he was like two points away from a disqualification and the question was like is f1 going to like like actually suspend him for super license points or are they gonna like conveniently like start giving him half points on his license for for anything um so i just think that it's really funny that's like what are they actually gonna do to punish these drivers also i love that um the presenters are now capitalizing on this double dnf thing uh, which I would love to coin. Um, it's not mine, obviously, but I love to say it, and I refuse to let an episode go by without saying double DNF. That's maybe that's my new contract thing: slipping in double DNF. Um, but the double DNFer of the weekend was Aston Martin. They yeah. had a cold weekend. Not just not a not a good not a good one for them um, in yeah. Mexico City. So. You know, maybe they're looking looking forward to Brazil, but they double DNF'd and uh, Crofty. They just look so bad. They did. It's really unfortunate after the 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 great start that they had that you know they're they're basically in in the the metaphorical basement. Obviously, they they haven't you know fallen that far in the standings. They're still solidly midfield, but they are not where anyone expected them to be. And um, they you know they they were just outdeveloped by everyone but specifically McLaren yeah and they just can't seem to get their upgrades figured out like I said they're just downgrading the car at this point they but Aston Martin just did not look like they had it together all weekend in any free practice in any you know in qualifying it just they didn't pull it out so I don't know yeah maybe maybe Brazil maybe next season we'll see yeah I mean I hope they they figure out a way to bounce back but doesn't look doesn't look good for the rest of this year. Well, because I mean, Fernando came out like swinging mm-hmm. with his you know, um, P three finishes, and I was so excited for him to have like a killer season. And then it's just kind of like progressively gone downhill. Um, oops! But, oops. We'll see. There's always yeah. next season. <laughs> mm-hmm. So with that. We've come to our recap of our Mexico City predictions, and yep. we didn't do all that great. So, nope. go team. We can run through these pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Pole was Charles. We picked Max. Oops. Where did yep. that come No one from? saw that coming. Nope. Um, podium. I will say I was very close on podium. Last time I you picked are. podium, briefly. this week I'm pretty close. So, podium ended up being Max, Lewis, Charles. And Catherine had Max, Checo, George. Yep. And I had Max, Lewis, Carlos. So I was just the wrong Ferrari car. Yeah, yeah, you were close. And then P10, um, we picked a Williams driver. Um, I picked the Williams driver who ended up finishing P9. And you got the Williams driver who retired on the last turn of the final lap. Um, and it turned out to be Esteban Ocon who finished P10. We, who, who would have thought? Tell everyone I'm going to be P10. Um, <laughs> <laughs> biggest surprise, we said that Logan was going to score points in consecutive races. And he didn't. And that's why we don't trust Logan Sargent. I'm just kidding. Um, it, was a, it was a rough race it's, for him. Retiring yeah. on the last lap. Oh, no. And a fuel pump issue. Um, who's going to do a dumb... Uh, Catherine said Haas, and and I was kind of right. 
kind of right. His car did break, and then it caught fire. Um, I said yeah. no one, and that is just <laughs> inaccurate. Everyone, you know, across the board, it seemed like did a dumb. So I was, you know, wrong. I had a lot of hope for the field this weekend. You but... did. They, they, they did not meet those expectations of yours. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying to be positive. But like we said, Mexico City is such a great Grand Prix and always something fun and exciting to look forward to. I really enjoyed the race. Lots of action. I know you had some, you know, volleyball in between the race, but um, Still it was a lot of entertainment. Loved it. Um, and, you know, it'll be another year until we hear the mariachi F1 um, yeah. theme song. Unfortunately, I'm just going to start spamming you with it like randomly on a random like Wednesday morning. You'll wake up with a with a DM from me. It's just going to be the mariachi version. Of Perfect. The intro. So. Well, that is it for the podcast. Coming up next, we have our Sao Paulo Grand Prix um, in Brazil, which is this weekend. So we've got three races in a row. Lots going on in the F1 world. This is the last Sprint race weekend of Thank the God. year. For Finally. real. Finally. Again, it wasn't Coda. It is actually Brazil. Then we're done. And then hopefully they fix the format for next year. If you please go to our Qatar uh, Grand Prix predictions podcast and you will hear all about it. But with that said, with the race this weekend, we do have our predictions podcast coming out on Thursday, and then we'll do a recap coming out on Monday as well. This is the last podcast where I will be recording normally, um, and then it's, you know, where in the world is Emily podcasting from? So that'll yeah. be fun. For and it'll be a, uh, do we have internet? Who knows? TBD. It we might be a Ka- Catherine only podcast from now going, going forward. I'm just kidding. But like I said, that's been the podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.